Mercedes-Benz Sprinter 3500 cargo van. I got it in 2018. It's a 2017 model. I got it new and I spent two years uh, experimenting and with a rough build out and this past September, October, November I ripped everything out of the van and did a complete build. Well, it's not completely done but it's pretty close. Um, prior to living in the van I spent 11 years living aboard a sailboat and it taught me a lot about all the different systems and things like that. So pretty much everything in this van is uh, marine grade and it's kind of like a, almost like a, a boat on wheels. So uh, I'll give you a quick tour and um, show you around. condominium. I've got a shower with a porta potty, hot water, uh, queen size bed, pretty much all the bells and whistles that are necessary for a comfortable van life. <clears throat> this is where I spend most of my time in the van except probably for sleeping back there in the queen size bed but sitting in this area either in the Ford Transit double seat that I installed. Um, it's got two uh, seat belts over the shoulder seat belts and the seat is bolted to the frame with grade A bolts so two adults can sit with the shoulder strap seat belted in while, while driving so that was kind of important so um, this way I can have four people in the van with uh, with seat belts on and uh, but this is where I spend most of my time and it's not bad I uh, have this lagoon table um, that I built out of poplar. All the wood in the van is poplar except with the exception of the ceiling. So I made this um, this nice table out of poplar. One thing I like to show people is um, a lot of people just take the lagoon and mount it right in the center uh, of the table which essentially it just it spins in one circle and it doesn't really give you a lot of different opportunities so when um, you mount your table I, I found it's best to offset it this way you have different options as far as where the table can go depending upon what you're using it for, uh, who's sitting where, and, and so forth. Um, I don't have a separate mount where I put the table when I'm driving and things like that because um, it just kind of gets tucked over there and then I tighten it down so it doesn't work its way forward. But it works really good and uh, I, this is, this is uh, really nice to have. So I installed the Alpine Mechanism seat swivels. It was the very, one of the very first things I put in the van. Um, I got one for the passenger and one for the driver side and fortunately I was living in Colorado at the time so I was able to visit their factory in Colorado Springs and pick them up and save on the shipping because <laughs> they're extremely heavy they're very beefy and they're very well made and they're really easy to use I got a little knob back here you twist that slide it around and bingo you're done same with the passenger one it gives you this nice option we don't have the shades in here and everything it's one of the best views in the van because you have almost like a 360, 360 view. Another thing I didn't do, which a lot of people do, is they put a shelf up here. I was gonna, I was gonna do that, but I really like the openness of it. Uh, it's almost quote unquote like my great room. I have the transit seats over here, able to get up and walk around, and not have to, you know, from the passenger seat have to duck and worry about things like that. But I get putting the shelf there. I, I do miss out on storage, but I really like the openness of it. Uh, of this all. Sunshine and the wind blowing in. I don't care, baby, you can take me anywhere. Little brown hearts racing to a hundred. Probably one of the main features that um, I really enjoy about the van is the ability to cook because I really like to cook and in fact Kitchen Hooey, uh, the food blog, initially started as a food blog um, kitchen for the food element and Hooey is just a group of friends so it's kind of just stuck. So I wanted a really nice um, kitchen area. I put an isotherm refrigerator in, one of the larger Freeline ones um, that has got a freezer that's big enough that I can actually, you can stick a whole frozen pizza box in there. 
Um, it's not narrow or whatever, and you can stick ice cream and stuff in there, but it's a big, a bigger uh, f uh, freezer. I also installed this two burner propane stove and oven. Um, works pretty good, it's a Thetaford. It's okay, the stove top's okay. To be honest, the oven, I'm not that impressed with. I had a, a much nicer one. Um, uh, that was uh, on the on our sailboat that uh, it seemed to cook a, cook a, cook much better. This one I'm just having a problem. It, it flames out. Um, it doesn't like release propane into the air. It's just that the flame it doesn't get it doesn't get hot enough for when I like to bake things, especially when I'm making pizzas, homemade pizzas. So the Ravati sink I like a lot. It's got the cutting board that uh, comes out. Um, it's got this strainer, which is pretty handy. And then the sink is very deep, um, very nice, and it's got a inserted rack. On the bottom so you don't bang it up with pots and pans and then uh, if you want to fill it up you can fill it up with water it's got a stopper in there so and then everything um in the in the galley and uh the cabinets and the framing for the bed is made out of 80 20 and the 80 20 is bolted to the frame it's just not you know i just didn't stick some drywall screws into the wall to hold this down so for me safety is very important in the van so all of it is bolted down to the factory bolt points um, in the floors and then I did pulse nut it um, in several locations to the walls to the frame so it's very 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 secure um, using 8020 is interesting and it works really well and aesthetically it looks really nice the cravat to it is it's very expensive and um, it's relatively easy to work with cutting it if you've never cut aluminum it can be very intimidating because um, some of the pieces are thick and it can be dangerous you got to know what you're doing you just don't you know throw it in a chop box and boom start cutting it so um, there's tons of videos out there on how to, you know, how to cut 80-20 and, and all that, but it, I really like it. It looks nice, it's functional, and it's very strong, and it makes for a nice galley. So when I build out the galley here, uh, which is not done, <laughs> I still have to put cabinets and uh, or drawers underneath the, this is the refrigerator freezer area, and then the stove area here, and then the sink area over there. Um, I haven't finished that. Um, the 8020 provides a nice um, surface uh, to, to uh, put a just some uh, quarter inch plywood in and, and, and some backing so it doesn't rattle around, but it's got like a fitted ed, fiddled edge, which uh, most boats have. So if you're, dri you're driving stuff, you can't slide off of here. You can stick stuff in here and it's not going to go anywhere, you know, unless you get in an accident. If you get in an accident, everything can become airborne. But um, it's kind of nice because you can leave some stuff out there. And like I said, the same uh, is over, the, over there. Um, and I like this higher area countertop for uh, doing some stuff. It, it's it's nice to have this height. And then it's also nice to have your standard countertop height over here for cutting and for cooking on. So this is nice if I'm writing something or if I have the computer up here or it's just nice to have another height. And then it also keeps the refrigerator up pretty high so I don't have to be on my knees when I want to get stuff out of the refrigerator. It's right here and easily accessed for me as opposed to having the refrigerator on the floor. Um, I like I like this setup. And it's all 80-20. It's all bolted, all integrated. Um, and then right behind here, uh, behind the refrigerator to that side, are all my electronics, which are uh, enclosed in a um, cellular PVC kind of cabinet that I made using Velcro and <laughs> cellular PVC. The amount of Velcro in here is pretty amazing. Like these panels right here, they're just stuck with Velcro to the walls, okay? They're, uh, I'm not losing any space, so this is the actual cutout. A lot of the people people uh, frame, and they'll put a framing up in here, and they're losing the inch and a half on this side and the inch and a half on the other side, so I didn't do that. I just kind of put some uh, insulation behind it, poly iso insulation behind it, so there is some insulation behind there. The rest of the van's got thin slit. Everywhere else in the van, there's thin slit insulation pack, packed everywhere. But um, I like the look. It's kind of... Not probably not for everybody, but it was pretty easy and pretty uh, inexpensive. Like I said, it's just the you know the panels are just uh, velc. I got my bags packed, timeline on track. My winter coat stuck in the closet. Well, there's a lot of discussion about showers and bathrooms and toilets and all that, but I do like having the ability to take a shower um, inside the van, especially because I'm using the van a lot for skiing and snowboarding, where. Having a shower hanging out off the back is just really not an option when it's five degrees out and snowing. So 
having a shower in the van was important. Um, so I put a pretty big shower in. It's 24 inches wide. I'm sorry, deep. It goes in 24 inches, and then it's 36 inches inches uh, inches wide, which gives me a pretty nice shower. Um, the inside of the shower is lined with FRP board, which is fiberglass reinforced polyester, which is 100% waterproof. Um, it adds a nice touch and um, looks it looks good, and it wasn't too crazy expensive. And then I did go for a Nautilus shower door, uh, which I installed, which essentially keeps things nice inside the shower. One thing I noticed on a lot of people's vans, Bill, is they'll be doing the, the nice tour and everything and they have the, the handle to the door on the outside, which I don't really understand because that means like somebody on the outside is going to shut and close the door for you. So the handle to the shower door, my shower door, is on the inside. So when you go inside, you're in here taking a shower and then when you're done, the handles there for you so it works really nicely uh, I, I have a shower head that I found online uh, that I've used in the past that I'll show you give you a look uh, that that only uses about a gallon per minute and um, I don't want to have much more water than that and honestly when I'm taking a shower I uh, do the Navy shower. So what's a Navy shower, if you don't know? It's uh, you rinse yourself off and you get yourself wet. Then you turn the water off. And then you soap yourself all up. And then when you're all sudsy and soaked up and you can't see anything, you turn the water back on and rinse off. <laughs> so sometimes when I'm at a, if I'm at an RV park, I'll let it rip and, and just take a luxurious shower. But most of the time, it's a Navy shower. Same when we were living on the boat, it was kind of Navy showers. And it really helps to conserve water. Oh, we'll go, we just want to get Okay, we're in the bathroom here in the shower area where I have the porta potty. But one of the things I wanted to show you was this um, this little dealie. It's a toilet paper holder made by Dometic that uh, is pretty neat because it keeps the toilet paper dry when you're taking a shower, and it saves on space because it's actually recessed into the wall. So it's like the toilet paper roll is being recessed into the wall. When you take a shower, all you do is you close it up, and when you're done, you open it up, and it automatically feeds out the paper pretty interesting like watch what happens it just tucks it right back up in there um, I know there's a lot of discussion about uh, airheads and what to use for the bathroom and the reason that I went with a porta potty in place of like a, a, a plumbed in toilet is I use the van a lot for skiing and snowboarding and then I'll jump back down maybe to the desert for a week or two so I want to have the ability to winterize it very easily and adding a uh, flushing system with you know fresh water and a black holding tank and all that um, would require a much more extensive much more difficult to use so the porta potty is kind of like for me is the um, easiest way to use and I'll do some videos on um, how to use the porta potty because I have some tricks uh, I have, uh, because I've been using it for quite a while on uh, the fishing boat I work on and in the van so uh, it's a Thetaford porta potty and it works great and I'm very happy with it cabinets that are framed out of 80 20 and um, I didn't want doors that open up up like that very, very rarely on a boat do you see anything like that so I made these sliders that slide very easy uh, very nice and give me a lot of storage up here it looks pretty sharp and then underneath the cabinet uh, I installed these uh, dimmable lights so you have like a little reading light so if you're sitting in the uh, if you're sitting in the transit seats there or you're sitting in the uh, the, the uh, driver's uh, the driver's seat up here, and you have access to some reading lights that are dimmable. I also installed uh, two uh, sets of dimmable lights in the ceiling. Um, one is for the front area, and then uh, the other is for the back area over the bed. And then there's of course the there's also the lights uh, in the bathroom. So there's a total of eight. 12 uh, dimmable LED lights in the, in the entire way. Go, 
Okay, let's talk some electronic stuff here. Everything in the van is marine grade in terms of the uh, equipment that I used. I used a, a Victron 2000 watt inverter charger. I have a Victron MPPT solar controller. I have a Victron DC DC charger. Uh, all the fuses or breakers are Blue C and all of the wiring is anchor wiring which is um, tin coated wiring marine grade. Um, here's my little control center for uh, the batteries and the electronics. So the digital multi-control is turns the inverter charger on or off. I'll, I can turn that on and then once I turn that on I now powering up my AC um, breakers here. Uh, I have three dedicated circuits so I can turn them on. Now I have full AC uh, going. The other thing that we have here is um, this is the SFAR uh, heater controller. This is the Victron 712 battery monitor. It tells me the state of the batteries. This thing also communicates with my cell phone via Bluetooth, as does the Victron DC-DC uh, DC and the Victron uh, solar controller. I can see all that stuff right on my phone. Um, the last little thing here I have here is the water pump switch. <laughs> now, let's talk water pump switches and water pumps. Some people leave them on all the time, and I learned the hard way on the boat that not to leave it on all the time because if there's any kind of leak at all and you're not there, one, you're going to drain your tank, and two, you're going to flood your van or your boat or wherever you have it on. So the only time that that's ever on is when we're actively using the shower or the sink. And like I said, I don't use the sink very much. So it's important. You can hear it running. It's important to me that I have an easily accessible water switch that I can turn on and off I can the ceiling is all tongue groove uh, quarter not quarter inch it's three maybe three sixteenths of an inch uh, cedar it's really nice and it was really to install and then I also uh, installed the L track up there for uh, various reasons to have, mostly to hang stuff and kind of get some workout to do some workout stuff in so the advantage of this is you can install things into the L track very easily like this now I got pull-up bars. I got places to hang my wet clothes, my wet ski clothes. I got it's been very, very, very useful. And the ceiling, interesting enough, I didn't drill any holes in the ceiling to attach it. Uh, the L track, I used some of the existing holes and pulse nuts, and I have and some of the uh, how, like what I did videos on the build. You can see how I did that. Uh, one of the interesting things I did is a lot of these wood and panels are attached either with velcro or velcro and magnets so like this panel right here it's just on there with velcro and i got the idea because when i lived on the boat a lot of the, our ceiling panels on the boat were attached with velcro and when you fly an airplane next time look around and some of their ceiling panels and things like that are attached with velcro so i used industrial strength velcro for the ceiling it, it initially held but what happened when i got into really hot uh the glue on the velcro side failed so this past fall I installed some of these rare earth magnets not uh, that look like this so I epoxied them onto the back of the uh, to the boards and since then it's been working great and I've been in very hot weather like I've been already above 100 degrees and everything works fine but and it also gives me the ability to really to just I can take it off and on relatively easy you can see uh, this is on the uh, one side of the board you can see some of the magnets and then you know, to put it back up, it's relatively easy. Bingo. <laughs> there you go. And it doesn't rattle. It doesn't make any noise. And it wasn't that expensive. And it's a pretty effective way uh, to do things. So the, the rare earth magnets, I'll put, I'll put a link down below. But um, every board has one. Not every single rib. I think the whole van, I think I used uh, two boxes of these rare earth magnets and it's been working great. It's really, really nice. If I ever want to take it down, I can take it down very relatively quickly. Amazing. These are amazing. You got to be careful with these things. They're extremely strong. Um, if, you, if you get two of them uh, apart from each other and they get too close together, when they run into each other, they can shatter literally into, into tiny little pieces because they're very thin. So it's, it's only like the thickness of, of maybe a quarter, not even that. So it worked really good. And okay, in the back of the van are is, uh, is the bed area, and I have a full size queen mattress. Um, I don't usually sleep this way. I sleep uh, 
you know, with my head up here and my feet facing down the back, but you could actually, uh, I'm six foot, you could sleep this way. Uh, and we have a 10 inch thick uh, memory foam mattress, which is, I think it's a little bit overkill. I, if I do it again, I don't think I need a, a 10 inches and then it give me a little bit more height here, but I can sit up, um, you know, without hitting my head, it's not a problem. And then on each side, I uh, have these ba uh, cargo container bags that I store clothing in and they're just tied up to the side of the van and then I run some bungee cords to keep them stuck kind of to the sides and it's worked pretty good. I don't think I'm going to put uh, cabinets back here. I just like the space. And then on this side, there's a lot of room um, for storage. There's almost, I'd say, at least a foot and then it goes down that 10 inches. So like for instance, in this bag, I go back and forth between skiing or snowboarding and biking. In this bag right now, I have all of my ski clothes because I'm in Lake Havasu City right now and it's supposed to be almost 80 degrees today, so I don't need this. Uh, last week when I was skiing in Salt Lake City, uh, this bag was filled with all my bike clothes and bike helmet. And it just lives right back here. And then I have clothes packed all in here, uh, depending upon the season. So it's plenty of storage. So I have my hatch, my marine grade uh, Lumar hatch right here above my bed. One of the neat things about this Lumar hatch is it fits perfectly between the ribs of the van, meaning the outer edges uh, here line up right on top of the ridge, so you don't have to make any kind of fancy gasket because it'll sit between the two ridges. And I'll put the link down below. It's the Lumar 40 Ocean Series low profile hatch. And then I also got the Ocean Air uh, inside screen and blackout attachment, which you can slide a screen one way, or you can slide the blackout the other way, or both of them can be retracted to allow full access in and out. We had um, four of them on our boat uh, for 11 years, and they were bulletproof. They lasted great in the uh, warm sun, so I feel pretty confident. And I've had this one uh, uh, on this van. It was one of the very first things that I put in here. And it's really nice. I don't have to have a ladder or anything now, so I mean, uh, it's nice lying in bed. I can look out and see the stars and stuff, and it's cool. It's, uh, I sit up here, like I said, a lot, and uh, a lot of the video that you're going to see is, is actually from me sitting in this position right here. And the propane tank is stored uh, underneath. This is the sink. The stove's right, right there. But it's secured with this 80-20 in here. And I mean, the whole van's shaking, right? Um, and then to use it, I just reach under here and open it do my cooking and as soon as I'm done cooking, I close it. So there's no solenoid. Um, I have a propane detector uh, that I that's behind there. You can't see from this side that will uh, go off if there's a propane leak. And I like the fact that I manually turn it off and on every, every time I use the, the fuel. I just like the ability to not have the tank permanently mounted to the van. I like it inside, that's just me personally. To be AB, whatever, the American Boat Yacht Council certified, compliant, you're supposed to have the, the sealed box. Um, may, maybe someday I'll put a seal box in, but um, right now I feel pretty confident about my safety level having it in extremely secured. Hey, if you're enjoying this, hit the subscribe button right there. I'll have a, a bunch more videos. Thanks. I have my water set up so I can open this up and I can run a drain. I'll show you the drain out the back and I can literally winterize this thing in about 10 minutes so it's all designed so it'll gravity drain and uh, I won't have any issues with things freezing. I'll show you I'll just throw these panels <laughs> these panels back on uh, they're pretty easy to take on and off. So here's one of the panels it's a uh, eighth inch thick poplar hardwood and uh, which I varnished and just put the velcro on the back when I attached the velcro I did um, use contact cement on the wood to get the velcro to stick better and then I also used contact cement um, on the uh, 8020 to get the velcro to stick better but it's super lightweight really easy and uh, all I do is put it back and I line it up there and, uh, that's it that's it that's it for that one there we got a good reveal one. 
just like that. That's it. It looks sharp. I haven't finished the inside of these cabinets yet. I'm going to put some drawers uh, underneath the refrigerator and uh, a drawer in this area. And what's been living underneath this area uh, has been the six gallon gray water tank for the sink, which, which right now I have at, pulled out at my uh, BLM campsite and a chair to kind of reserve, keep my real estate or my space, my camping space so nobody takes it. And um, I'm not really using it as a gray tank. I'm using it as an auxiliary water tank because like I said, all the dishes I just use Windex and paper towels, but it's set up, the sink works and everything works. Um, I just don't use it that much. I use the shower every night. I pretty much take on a hot shower almost every night, but uh, I just haven't been using the kitchen sink. So that's the galley area and that's some of the 80-20 you can see. And uh, that's that. Okay, the electronics, the refrigerator is right here and right back in here in this area. Uh, this is uh, cellular PVC, so it's just polyvinyl chloride plastic with a lot of air in it and it's pretty light but I made a cabinet out of it to house the electronics and uh, all that stuff's back in here uh, the Battleborn batteries are right in here and all the electronics are in here which this door I can open up and it'll give me immediate access to the fuse panels and any of the breakers or switches I have but the whole thing comes apart I can take it I could take this all apart in about which I'll, I'll I'll show you all right let's go check out the back of the van or what most of you folks call the garage that's the okay the back of the van or the garage area is pretty packed with stuff I have downhill skis cross-country skis a snowboard, uh, a kite surfing board, kite surfing equipment, uh, a mountain bike, a road bike, tools, and I was going to get these really fancy slides and everything, but I came up with a, a, an 80-20 solution that uh, ended up being permanent. I didn't buy any slides, I just fabricated this out of stock aluminum 80-20, but it's a, it's a bike slide that I can hold, I can hold three bikes on. The L-Track back here is kind of multifunctional. Not only is it the um, support for the bed, but it's also the mounting place for uh, a lot of my equipment back here. I'm gonna do something I haven't done uh, in months and months, and then I'll, I'll take everything out of the back of the van. Which... Everything's out of the back of the van. That was a little project, but uh, it was good that I did it. Um, I'll give you some close-ups of some of the build uh, on the inside, and you can see how I did the 80-20 and how everything is secured. But uh, that's it. So that's the Northwest Conversion 20-gallon water tank, and then the Bosch. Uh, two, I think it's two and a half gallon hot water heater. Uh, it's all held in with 80-20. And the 8020 look is bolted in and attached to the frame. Alright. It's all velcroed in there like said, with uh, cellular PVC, which is just PVC with a bunch of air in it to make it lighter. And you can buy it in a sheet. I think it was a 4x8 sheet I bought. Home, De Home Depot or Lowe's, and then uh, I just industrial strength Velcro together these panels. But it works pretty good. It doesn't conduct electricity. It wasn't that expensive. It looks pretty nice. It's pretty easy to work with. It's lightweight. <laughs> that was a hard one to get off. <clears throat> all right, there's all the electronics. Bring it a little closer here. Okay, in the top, we got the um, Victron uh, MPPT 1030 uh, solar charge controller with the lines coming in and out, and then uh, it's protected by a fuse. There's a breaker uh, right up near, near the solar panels to protect that wire, and then uh, below, 
Below that, we've got the uh, Blue C 12 volt distribution panel. This is the um, uh, positive side um, bus bar, <laughs> fully enclosed. So, you know, the positive side things you really want to have covered up because that's where, uh, if you drop a wrench on or something and it touches the van, you're going to have potential for a fire. Uh, the other things that you can see here is the uh, on off switch so I can turn off the batteries to kill the power to everything. And then you've got your uh, Victron 2000 watt inverter charger. And over on this side of things, you've got your negative bus bar right there. And below that is the shunt that sends the information to the Victron 712 battery monitor, which is up above the in the great room up there. And you look down over here right over here and here in the batteries this is the uh, fuse for the positive wire coming off the batteries so it comes from the batteries to the fuse to the to the on and off and I know people are going to criticize the the fuses are there to protect the wire and these wire runs are really short but I just did everything once and just wanted to do a clean and then this whole this is a cellular PVC uh, which I mounted everything everything to so that's pretty much the electronics and it's got a lot of air to be able to breathe so things don't get too warm in here. Um, my electrical needs are pretty minimal. You know, the biggest electrical need that I have is that. But to make the cabinet, all I did was um, take the Velcro and uh, I did use um, some contact cement on the back of uh, the uh, plastic to make the Velcro stick better. Um, this stuff is pretty cool. It's actually the whole panel is made out of uh, the cellular PVC and then it just goes back into place um, relatively easy and it doesn't rattle. It was pretty inexpensive. It looks good. It doesn't conduct electricity which is nice. <laughs> Okay, there you go. That's my electronic cabinet. <laughs> oh, the other thing you notice, I can pass through the whole van underneath, which um, works. has been working out pretty good because sometimes if I don't want to go outside to get something, I can reach back and grab a tool. Or last week when I was skiing in solitude, they plowed in my back doors. So I keep my skis, you can't see, but they're right there. And uh, it would have taken me at least an hour to get the, the well, it did, it did take me an hour. By the time I got done skiing, I had to dig out. So I was able to pull my skis uh, from the from the back of the van into the front of the van and use the slider door to get out and not miss out on a powder day. So design the van to uh, drain uh, relatively quickly and easily so I can go back and forth between summer and quote, quote summer and winter, depending upon what I'm doing. And uh, the water tank up there I have a line that runs back um, to this back corner with a valve on it and then when I want to drain it I just stick this um, on there. It comes out the back, I can almost shut the door and then I open up the valve and it gravity drains, uh, completely gravity drains the tank. Alright, that's it. That was the tour. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, appreciate it if you like. If you liked it, like hit the like button, and then if you could subscribe, that'd be great too. I'll have uh, some videos on uh, how I how I built this, as well as uh, where I took it. So uh, subscribe and like it, and we'll see you in the next one.